Get ready for your daily dose of WordPress and web development tips, tricks, and insights to help you find success with WordPress. You're listening to WP the Podcast with your hosts, David Blackman and Tim Streifler. Hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of WP the Podcast brought to you by WP Gears. I'm David Blackman. And I'm Tim Streifler. Today we've got a super exciting technical topic. <laughs> Seems like we've had quite a few of those in a row. Uh, episode 634, we're going to talk about uh, why your contact form may not, emails may not be sending or why your emails are going to spam. So we're going to kind of cover some things, why it's happening, but we're also going to give you some tips and, t- and tricks to help solve the problem for you as well. Yeah, absolutely. So first things first, let's kind of talk about, as David mentioned, what the issue is and why it happened. So uh, basically, websites are configured to load web pages, right? Web Or um, website servers are, are configured to load web pages, right? And so um, they're not really configured for sending emails. And so when uh, WordPress sends emails, so the, the, Word, the emails that WordPress can send can be anything from a password reset email when you forget your password or one of your customers forgets a password, an email receipt if you're using um, a uh, e-commerce plugin such as WooCommerce or EDD, a form submission. So, for example, you have your built-in contact form on your, th- uh, your theme or page builder or you're using something like Gravity Forms. Uh, those are all... Th- emails that WordPress has to send and it's using the web server to send that. However, the web server, as I mentioned, isn't really configured to be sending emails. It's configured to be serving web pages. Also, if you're on cheap shared hosting, chances are your IP address has already been blacklisted by uh, different email uh, ser- services like Gmail and, and so forth. And so, um, so those are that's kind of the, the the basics for why it happens. And so, because it's not configured to be sending email, and because of like shared servers, shared IP addresses. Uh, the IP address can get blacklisted. And so it ends up going to spam or not getting delivered at all even can sometimes happen. And so it's a very common problem, um, whether it's your contact form or an email receipt or this or that. And so um, basically uh, what you want to do is you want to get the emails that are being sent by your, your, your website server by WordPress and outsource it to some sort of service that specializes in sending emails. And so we're going to talk about a couple of those options. Now, the first one on the list that I'm going to talk about, and then David's going to talk about the next one is uh, a free plugin. Um, it's brought to you by WP forms, uh, one of Saeed Belki's companies. And uh, the plugin is called WP mail SMTP by WP forms. And it's a free plugin. Um, if you type in WP mail into the WordPress repository, you're going to find it. Um, but basically it allows you to use an SMTP, which is stands for simple mail transfer protocol, uh, for sending emails. And so for example, you can use a Gmail account to send your WordPress emails, uh, instead of, of your, your website server. And so, uh, we won't get into all the, uh, technicalities on how it works and so forth, but, um, it can be a really cheap and, and easy way to send emails. Um, and I would say that's a good solution for small sites, not e-commerce. You know, you're not sending a lot. You maybe have a occasional contact form submission being sent, that sort of thing. That can be a really good solution. However, if you're an e-commerce site and you have a lot of traffic, a lot of, uh, users, uh, customers, a lot of things happening, a lot of emails being sent, then we recommend the next thing that David's going to talk about. Yeah, the next thing is uh, a paid email delivery service, and we use them. There's a couple of options out there that are pretty popular and common. One of them is called SendGrid, and the other is MailGun, and they essentially do the same thing. They're just a paid service where SendGrid or MailGun, they are an, an email service provider, basically. Their servers are optimized to get your emails delivered from your website. Um, And it's a paid service, and they're pretty inexpensive, you know. So we have a couple of pretty highly trafficked e-commerce websites and AspenGroveStudios.com, Divi.Space. Tim has Divi.Life, you know. And there's a lot of transactional emails going out and stuff. And 
we pretty much have no problem whatsoever. And, and we use SendGrid. I'm not sure if Tim uses SendGrid or Mailgun. I think he uses SendGrid also. Um, but we also use it on WP Gears for our course and our students and stuff. And and it's just, it's easy and it works, you know. So if you want to make sure that your emails are getting sent, in, sent out, use one of these paid services, um, you know, we're not going to go into the details of how exactly they work and stuff, but their servers are optimized to send emails, and they're constantly reviewing when something gets blacklisted, making sure that your um, those IP addresses and stuff aren't blacklisted and stay clean and stuff. And de- deliverability is probably very, very high in the high 99%, if not 100%. I don't know what they guarantee, but it I highly doubt they guarantee 100%, but... Yeah, no, definitely. And uh, just wanted to clarify, just in case there's any confusion here, transactional emails is the emails that WordPress sends, and they call it transactional because something's happening, whether you're trying to get a, a password or you're buying a, a product, you know, WordPress is sending an email in response to some sort of, of uh, um action and so that's why it's called transactional uh this is not to be confused with the email that you set up for your company like for example uh to be able to send emails out to you know your your customer you know uh you know or your internal team and stuff this is not like your john at your domain.com email that's something different that's not what we're talking about here and we're also not talking about email marketing emails like mailchimp and so forth uh that's again, a little bit different. And so this is only transactional emails. And so David, you asked what I use. I actually don't use SendGrid or Mailgun. I use the secret, the secret third option that we didn't list on here. And that, and that is Mandrel. Mandrel is actually owned by MailChimp. And so you have to have a paid MailChimp account in order to use Mandrel. And then it's a paid add on. Um, and so I use it just because I'm, I'm used to MailChimp and so I'm kind of in that world already. Uh, and so I use, I use Mandrill. And so again, it's, it's separate from the MailChimp email marketing uh, and it's just for, for sending transactional emails, but it works well. But yeah, uh, if you don't use MailChimp, uh, SendGrid and Mailgun are both great options. I've used both. I've used SendGrid probably a little bit more on client sites and stuff. And then as David mentioned, we use SendGrid for uh, WPGears.com. Awesome. Well, tomorrow we've got another great topic, how to reduce WordPress database bloat. This is an important one, folks, so make sure you tune in. Tim, until tomorrow, we'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye. We've come to the end of today's episode of WP the Podcast. Join us tomorrow for more daily tips and strategies designed to help you run your WordPress business towards success. Remember to subscribe to WP the podcast so you can stay up to date with each episode. And don't forget to rate and review us. We'll see you again tomorrow right here on WP the podcast.